Hey, what's going on? This is Marcos. Today we'll be taking a look at the Port Keys P6 five and a half inch monitor, 1920 by 1080 resolution. And just a disclaimer, this product was sent to me for review. All right, so when I pulled it out of the box, the first thing I noticed, uh, what surprised me is that it's really, really light. It weighs 130 grams, which is practically nothing. It weighs probably less than your phone. Uh, it is the size of your phone, a little bit thicker. So if you're looking for a travel a monitor that you can take with you everywhere, it's not gonna add a lot of weight, this is probably be perfect. I've tested a lot of budget monitors and I would, I would say that this by far has the best uh, picture quality. The resolution is great. I, I'm just impressed how, by how accurate and how good the picture looks right out of the box. Uh, so another neat feature about this monitor is that you can load in your own LUTs. It's, it already has LUTs preloaded into it. Um, it has for Canon, Panasonic, and some for S-Log3, and they work out great. But you can also load in your own LUTs. Let's say you want a particular look and you want to see it straight in the monitor, you can go ahead and load them. Uh, talking about the box, it comes in this carrying case, which is really neat when manufacturers include a carrying case for their products because I can just quickly throw this in my camera bag and it's not gonna scratch up. That's very important. It also comes with the sun hood, so when you're filming outside, this is a 500 nit monitor, so it's perfect, I would say, for gimbal work because the resolution is great and it's bright enough and with the sun hood, you know, it, you can perfectly work with it outside. It comes with two HDMI cables. One is just regular HDMI to HDMI. One is micro HDMI to HDMI. And then it comes with this nice swivel arm. And what's cool about it is that when you flip the screen, flip the monitor the other way, let's say you're filming yourself, the, the screen automatically flips on itself. There's no need to press another button. So that's a really cool feature. It has HDMI in and out. In the bottom, you'll see it has the USB-C in order to load in your LUTs. Also, you can power it with the power bank or you can do it with DC out. It has a quarter inch in the bottom and in the side, a quarter inch. Um, and then it, the other way you can power it is with Sony MPF batteries. Those are very popular. You probably already have a, a lot of those around or with Canon LP6. And I almost forgot to mention that the swivel arm does come with a cold shoe mount on the side and a quarter inch in case you want to mount a microphone on it in case you're doing like vlogging style type of uh, shooting. This is not a touchscreen monitor. It is controlled by buttons on the top. It has four function buttons, which you can preset to false colors, which are great to have on monitors. Uh, I like to turn on the rule of thirds, the, the, the grid lines. Uh, also, what's awesome about this monitor is the waveform. It's it's by far the best I've seen in a monitor. I've tested other my, uh, monitors with waveforms, and they're just not as good as this one. This is great. You can perfectly see where the waveform sits at. I, I really like looking at the waveform. On most monitors, I just don't enjoy it. I just never use it, but on this, I would definitely use it. Then, uh, to turn on and turn off the, the monitor, I love that it's just the switch. You can flip it on or flip it off. With my Ninja 5, that's one of the things I hate about it. You pr you long press the, the power button and it just doesn't come on. And then it finally comes on and like, oh, there it is. And then when you turn it off, sometimes you press it and then you let it go and it doesn't turn off and you just do it again. And I wish this was a feature that was built into all the monitors. I just don't like long pressing buttons. Other features I forgot to mention are the headphone out. You can monitor your audio through the uh, through the monitor. Also, things like Zebras, you can turn those on. I really didn't test those out. There's also aspect ratios and other things uh, which are not impor as important to me. What's important to me is the false colors and the waveform. I, I think those are the primary functions I care about. Also, there's audio meters to monitor your audio. Let's say you're recording yourself. That's also good to have. So overall, I would say this monitor wins the prize for the best display on a budget monitor. I've tested a lot of budget monitors and by far this is the best. Uh, I was surprised by how good it was given that it's so lightweight and small. It just didn't feel like much. It doesn't feel like it's going to be great because of the size of the, the weight and the size. Uh, I, I was really surprised by that. It is, it is lightweight, which means it is, it is made out of plastic. So, you know, it's not the most robust. Uh, another thing that I don't like about it is just that it's not touchscreen. I, I've, I've worked with touchscreen monitors and it's hard to go back because the button menus, it's really hard to dig, dig through the menus and sometimes you hit a button and it's not what you wanted. 
So that's very cumbersome when you're out filming or you're just trying to dig through them. I mean, I just don't like it. Once you have touch screen, it's easier to go through the menu. So that's a drawback on that, on this one. Um, but overall, just, you know, I'm surprised that poor keys could make something uh, so small and such a high quality display that that's very important. Uh, so guys, if you have any questions, comments, suggestions, please let me know down below. I'd love to hear from you. Uh, as always, thank you for watching and I'll catch you on the next one.